Welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. In today's episode, I have some brand new farmhouse spring DIY items to share with you. These techniques can be used all throughout the year in different seasons, however, but if you're anything like me, it's January, you might have a little bit of winter blues, or you're just dreaming of some nice blue skies and planting your garden days, which should be right around the corner. Hopefully you enjoy these DIYs. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. If you like any of today's projects, remember to hit that thumbs up, but let's go make some DIYs. I found these little stack, this little stack of like blocks, not quite like a stack of books, but I got this at the thrift store and I thought it was in really good condition. But if you don't have something like that, one of these little book stacks like this would work from Dollar Tree or even like one of the little crates that you can paint to look like a book stack. You don't have to have this exact piece, but the fundamentals of this idea are, are, are all the same. So you can definitely use this to what pieces you do have. So my original intent was I'm going to sand off all of this cute, I mean, it's a cute saying and everything. It's just not something that doesn't match my home or anything like that. And I wanted to kind of have more more of I just when you're a creator you just see things and you just want to make them your own and so that's kind of where I'm going with this so I'm just sanding these off and they actually come off really easy now when I sand for projects like this uh, if you guys have watched me you know I love to use fingernail files and emery boards uh, I buy mine in bulk on Amazon I will leave a link in the description box but guys any emery board is gonna work fine pick them up at Dollar Tree if you would like to um, but they just get into all those nooks and crannies and everything and they work really well now this piece was like one of those magical pieces because when I sanded off the design, the paint job still looked beautiful. And so it was a really easy piece. I didn't even have to end up painting this. However, if I did, I would have just used a light white cream color or something of any kind of chalk paint. And that's how I would have just gotten it. So if you pick up like a book stack or you have something else and need to paint it, just any kind of chalk paint. I went around and sanded the edges uh, to give it a little bit of a rough farmhouse look. And I'm just wiping with a wet paper towel off any dust or anything that might be left. Now I did purchase these stan stencils from Essential Stencils and I have used some of their stencils before in my videos and I do really like their stuff. This is not sponsored in any way. I was just very impressed with their stencils that I used and they came out with these spring, they have like a spring and Easter line of rub-on transfers and I thought it would be really fun to try these. Now I don't feel like they're quite as expensive as like the IOD transfers. Um, but when you look at all the transfers that you get and kind of divide it by the size of the Dollar Tree transfers, I feel like you're not really that much more. You just have to buy them all at once. So, but any kind of transfers work. Amazon, you can get some rub on transfers for very inexpensive. Pick ones up at Dollar Tree. I just feel like Dollar Tree hasn't really gotten any new ones in that I've used or seen, uh, at least at my Dollar Tree. And so I thought this was fun because it was something a little bit different. So I'm just going to pick out a couple of these cute little flower stamps. I thought that would be really cute on here and my original intent was to do three of them across this little stack of blocks. Now I quickly realized once I cut these out and this is just how you get these off of their little sheets here or separated as you just cut in between them here and I just cut them down to size but when I go to place this on here I'm realizing it's a little bit bigger than I thought. It was kind of one of those like oh I didn't really calculate very well so I thought well two would be kind of cute on there but you know, it's just kind of a matter of personal taste, or even if you had like a couple of these blocks or book stacks together, you could probably do one of the bigger transfers on there would be really beautiful. So I get a couple of littler ones on here and I decide I just kind of pick out my favorites or the ones I want on this project and I end up doing three across. Now you could leave them like that, all just kind of in a row like that. I do end up pulling that first one up to the top and moving that other one down to the bottom just to have a little bit of a staggered look for visual interest. But again, you're gonna do what works best with whatever you like and what looks great to your eye. It's so fun as a creator, just kind of wanting to make things your own. Um, and so to use these transfers, you're just going to peel off, it's like a plastic like film on top of the backing. And when you peel off that plastic film, you're going to have your transfer, your design on there. And so it's going to be a teeny bit sticky, like not a lot, but enough that it's going to hold it to your surface. When you place that down, you wanna just make sure it's kind of like one and done, you stick it down. It's very hard to peel it up and move it. It's possible, but you may, you run the risk of tearing your design. So if you can get it set down exactly where you want the first time, that's best. And then I'm just using a little plastic uh, stick here to rub this on a craft stick, like a popsicle stick or wooden craft stick or something works just fine. Uh, like an old gift card, anything like that. Just something that you can use to rub onto the surface here and it will transfer that design. Now, when you peel it, you wanna just peel it really carefully 
and if any of the design is left on the carrier sheet just place it right back down and then just kind of rub over it for that to um, come off you can kind of see here I put it back down and if there's a little bit there I'm going into that little crack right there really good and then I'm just going to keep slowly peeling it back making sure that whole design transfers these are very forgiving, but you just want to go slow in order for it to be forgiving. And um, because I feel like even if when you lay it back down, it doesn't match up 100%, you're still kind of going for that vintage vibe. It still looks fine. So you can just kind of see here, that's beautiful. And then I don't show this uh, right here, but what you take do, and I think I'll show it in a minute here, is you take your plastic uh, cover and you just rub that over the design that you laid down. That helps to kind of burnish it onto the the uh, blocks there and help seal it. And then I do end up going over it with some Mod Podge, but I'm just going to do that exact same process with the others. I work on these two ends here and maybe I should have done the middle one first. I don't know, the spacing ends up being fine, especially where I can have them all on there together. I just thought getting those two ends together and I have people tell me all the time, oh yeah, you start this way. Or some people say, no, you start in the middle and work your way out. It, it worked fine for me. So whatever way works best um, when you're doing it to kind of measure. And if you want to get out your like ruler and kind of exactly measure it, definitely do that. So that way you know where everything is going. But I feel like it's farmhouse. If it's a little bit off, it's totally fine. <laughs> But that, that's me, you know, so whatever. Anyhow, so same process here, just kind of rubbing those down and then just gently peeling them back. And um, it's very simple. I feel like this is a fun project if you have grandkids or kids or somebody that you want to do this with or something, a project like this. This is something that is perfect for them uh, because they're able to do it very simply. It turns out very beautifully. Even like a very beginner type crafting project, you have that success rate of, oh my gosh, that was really easy and it's done and it looks beautiful. One trick to do here is use a brush to tap down into the middle of like your separation, like the little cracks right here. Uh, because if the design doesn't push down all the way there, that's one way to kind of tap it down into all those little nooks and crannies and it looks great. And it's one like a really nice trick to do that. Now here's where I'm taking that plastic and I'm rubbing over all of the designs on here. This is just to helping seal them, give them a nice kind of like, you're kind of polishing your design here. Uh, and it's going to uh, be really nice and make sure it's all adhered and there's no like snags or anything uh, poking up. I just go over the top with some Mod Podge, just any kind of Mod Podge, the kind of if you want uh, like a satin finish or gloss finish, it's up to you. Uh, but this is just going to help seal it, make it a little bit waterproof. If anything, I mean, you definitely don't want to set this outside. But if you um, if you got anything on it or something like that, you'd be able to wipe it down and that way it would help to seal the design. Now it's beautiful the way that it is, but I love to add a little bit of greenery when I'm doing little block stacks like this. And so I'm just taking from Walmart some of their boxwood and their boxwood is so beautiful and I feel like it has a much more realistic color than uh, say Dollar Trees does and so I really do like theirs. It might be I think for the amount of sprigs you get, it kind of works out to be a little less actually. Um, but like I, I can't remember if it's a dollar ninety seven or two ninety seven, but you get like a really big like stack like a big stack of it um or not stack of it like bushel of it I don't know what you say but you get a lot of it and it's quite a much more thick than Dollar Trees so I'm taking I take three sprigs for each side off of my uh pick that I have a pick that's what it's called <laughs> you, you get a bigger pick of flowers anyhow and so I take I put the one on the ends there and then I'm taking two more and stacking on top of it so it kind of looks like layered so it's not just all clumped on there you kind of have a little bit out toward the edge and then it gets kind of thicker as it goes into the middle and I'm just using a fair amount of hot glue in the center there. I will put a bow on here, but some flowers or something would also look very nice, something to kind of cover that middle section. You can even put a little bit more boxwood if you could get it to look really nice or anything there, but I just hold that till that glue has a nice good dry feel. Now this is just a bow that I had from some of the Christmas decor that I had that I purchased this year. I believe it was in a package that came from Hobby Lobby and I think there was like six or seven of these bows with some like little clips on them. So I'm just trimming down the edges because it's a little long for this project and then I'm just going to use some hot glue to stick this down in the center uh, and that kind of brings in a little bit of that rustic burlap into there which is really cute with it. I love the contrast between these bur the burlap and that granary on the picks. So again, it's just a little bit of hot glue that I stick down and then I'm going to hold that bow until it completely dries. 
Another totally optional idea is if you want to rough up those little designs a little bit more, maybe you want to have them look a little bit more vintage, you can just lightly go over the top of them with your fingernail file. You may want to do this before you put your Mod Podge down, either that or go back and kind of reseal over it with the Mod Podge because you're just kind of like sanding it off at this point. But it kind of has a really nice touch to it to make it look a little bit more roughed up on the actual design. Again, just a total optional, but I thought I would just show this if this is something that you uh, did want to try. I am so pleased and happy with how this piece turns out. I think it's beautiful and I think it's going to be a great addition for like spring decor or even just some farmhouse decor. But the fundamentals of making this piece are the same whether you do it for any season or any style to fit your home. So if you're not specifically looking for something for spring or farmhouse or something, keep this in the back of your mind to remember for different projects for different seasons because it is so simple to make and look at how beautiful it turns out. And I think these would sell really well at like a boutique or bazaar or something like that. What do you guys think of this? I'm taking some of the Dollar Tree calendar pages and I originally pulled out, this is from Dollar Tree, it's just one of their wood rounds. And I think if I had chosen a different calendar page, I would have been able to get away using this wood round, but I wanted to show you as an option. But look at all of these. This is the locally grown, the farmhouse catalog from this year from Dollar Tree. And though some of those pictures on the back are absolutely darling, you can kind of, I'm just going through here looking at this calendar and some of these pages, they're so pretty and the designs are beautiful. And I mean, we, it's no secret that we all love using some of the Dollar Tree calendar pages because they're so cute and they're so affordable and you can get several projects out of one calendar. But I fell in love with this Hello Spring page here. I think this little lamb on there is darling. And I just love the turquoisey color of the writing, that light, light blue and those flowers. I just think this really does kind of like capture the whole vibe of spring. And I thought it would be really fun. Now you can see here as I'm placing on the wood round, it would have the letters would not have fit very well. And I know the calendar page is a little bit bigger than this. And I feel like if you'd painted it all the same color, you kind of could have uh, made it really kind of blend in together. But I happen to have this piece that I got at Hobby Lobby and I paid like $3 or and change for it. And you can see it's a little bit bigger than the calendar page, which I actually really liked. Now, another option for you is get a couple of the Dollar Tree like square signs and use that and glue them together with some popsicle sticks on the back. So it's all one big one. If you can't find anything like this, like from Hobby Lobby or you don't have anything in your stash. So just use a couple Dollar Tree signs together to do this. Now I'm going to paint this uh, over because I want to cover up this little sign and this is a cute sign the way that it is but again it's not really anything that's my decor uh, and I bought this piece from the clearance section like I do many of my pieces thinking in my mind that okay I'm going to change this to match my decor or I'm going to change this to something I create that I can then sell. You get a nice sturdy piece for very inexpensive and then you know you paid like $1.25 for 12 different pictures you could use to put on it for, with the calendar pages. So I just use my heat tool to help this dry between each of the layers here. I love love using a heat tool to kind of speed up the process because if you craft it like the rate that I craft at, I feel like time is money. You want to just be creating things and, and being able to dry things quickly is very much uh, something you need. Now I gave this three coats of the paint to cover that design and I'm taking some antiquing wax just on a chip brush here. That's literally what they called somebody asked me something about when I say chippy like what I'm talking about. These literally are called chip brushes. You go into a paint store and ask for a chip or chippy brush. This is the kind of brush they're going to give you. So I'm just lightly putting that in the antiquing wax and then uh, wiping some off on the paper towel and then I'm just lightly going over you can see here I'm just trying to create I'm really not 100% being like oh this looks just like wood grain but that's kind of the effect that I'm going for but I mean you can kind of do this if you want or not it's up to you I just thought this would help blend that picture in a little bit more uh, and you'll see what I mean when I place that together and I'm literally sitting here trying to calculate like do I want to go up or down on these or how straight do I want to go so I went a little wonky on that one so it kind of gives it a little wave to it just kind of adds a little bit like more of that imperfection that we love so much with farmhouse decor and then you just want to be careful going over the places you've already gone because you don't want to smear this antiquing wax. Now this is Waverly's antique wax. It is their type of antiquing wax that is literally called antique wax. I've had somebody ask me about that recently. Any type of liquid water-based antiquing wax will work for this. So you have what uh, antiquing wax that can be like a solid wax uh, that you use, or you can use like a liquid antiquing wax. And I'm using the liquid antiquing wax from Waverly and I love it, but they sell a lot of different brands or folk art sells a brand. Uh, you can buy some on Amazon, your craft stores, Walmart is where I pick this up at. 
and they do have this back in stock at Walmart for a long time. They haven't had the Waverly paints there, but they do now. So I'm just letting you guys know that because I get a lot of questions all the time about uh, the antique wax that I use. So you can kind of just see, I know that calendar page is going to be in the middle, but if for some reason you could see through it, I kind of wanted there to be a little bit of like this uh, texture behind it. And so that way it would... Um, it would show through and it would look like it was all one cohesive piece. But when you place this down, you can see how beautiful that edge looks. Now, I when I placed it down, I went, I don't really want this to have that hard square edge on the calendar page. So I decided to kind of rough up the edges like it was a torn design. And I really love how this ends up looking. So you can rough this up in any way that you would like to, or you can just leave it as a square calendar page. I just, you'll see how it looks with um, where I tear this. And I lightly just go, being careful not to tear too crazily. I don't want to rip into the designs or the words or anything. But this also helps to blend in the little hole at the top from the calendar, um, where the little hole where you would hang it on your wall would be. This helps to kind of mask that also because you'll kind of tear uh, where that hole would be. And so you don't even see that. And now you can see how beautiful that's going to look on this sheet here with that edge. And it's when I do a little bit more antiquing wax on this edge after I glue it down, it looks so beautiful. I love it. So I'm just turning this over. I love to use the purple Elmer's school glue. It is the only type of glue stick that I've had long-term success with. And I mean, I've made pieces from several years ago and I've never had them peel up or anything. Mod Podge would work great too. There's several different decoupage techniques, but this is the glue that I love. It's inexpensive. Uh, when you buy it on clearance after school I <laughs> after school time you guys start looking for this in the section because at Walmart it goes down to like 33 cents for each of these big sticks and if you keep them sealed they last for such a long time so I just make sure that every little bit of that is covered with that glue and then I'm going to work from the center out and you can kind of see that I little have a little smudge there that I just made of some glue on there and I'll show you how I take care of that so it does dry clear the purple glue so that is nice if you have any seep out from the edges that you miss or something it dries clear so you're not even going to see it so i work my way from the center pushing out making sure that there's no wrinkles or bubbles or anything and that's what's so great about using this kind of glue is i feel like your wrinkles and bubbles really are to a minimum now here's that little smudge there i just take a wet paper towel or a baby wipe i'm just spraying a little bit of water onto a paper towel and i just kind of gently rub i know it doesn't look like i'm rubbing very gently but i felt like when i did this i was actually rubbing really gently gently because I don't want to tear the design and it comes right off there now and then you're going to want to seal this with some uh, uh, mod podge on here to make sure that the design seals on there so that way it does give it a layer of protectant here now if some of your edges aren't um, maybe they dried a little bit ahead, like after you put it down or something and they're kind of peeling up a little bit just put a little on the surface like I am there and then just rub that down and again uh, any of that purple glue that is showing will dry clear and then when you put your Mod Podge on this then you're going to have the same finish you're not going to see like a glossy part or like the sheen from where the glue would be here's what I'm talking about about I'm taking a little bit of antiquing wax just on a baby wipe and I'm just going over that torn edge on there and it just kind of helps to show that up a little bit might be kind of hard to see from here but you can see up in the upper right hand corner it really shows there and then I'm taking just a little bit of what's left over in that antiquing wax and I'm going over the picture here to kind of add a little bit more vintage look to it and that's something that's just a matter of I love to do that sort of thing and I really like the finish that it gives so this is a completely optional step here but I just want to show you kind of what it looks like and any texture that's on there really really picks that up so it just gives it a little bit more of a vintage uh, feel like it's just a sign that's been sitting out in the barn for several years that you're pulling out to put out for your spring decor I think this sign is absolutely beautiful. I love how it turned out. I love the piece of it. I do actually really love that trim around that calendar page because that base piece was bigger than it. I really love how that looks. And I feel like this is such a beautiful piece. You could sell these. I've seen actual pieces like this, very similar to this at Vintage Market Days, people selling them for $20. And I mean, it cost me less than $4 to make. And I think this is so beautiful. I wanna know what you guys think of this. Have you tried doing pieces like this with the Dollar Tree calendars? And it doesn't have to be Dollar Tree calendars check your thrift store for different calendars or if uh, you happen to maybe just keep them from year to year because you buy calendars that you think are cute because some of those pictures are beautiful that you want to keep and this is a great way to preserve those and use them in your everyday decor
This piece is really simple and it doesn't take a whole lot of time to create and it's really, really pretty. And I just have these pieces from Dollar Tree. So I'm showing you five pieces here. If you want to make a base out of like this leftover piece right here, it's, that's totally optional. I just wanted to keep this under that $5 price point. And now that it's a dollar twenty-five, not a dollar, we're working with four items, <laughs> not five. So I have two of the square pieces and two of the like picket fence or house looking pieces. These came from the crafter square section at Dollar Tree. They have them in this finish and there's also like a white finish. You can also paint it to be any color that you would like. I'm going to leave mine this natural color today. Now I'm just taking my heat tool to help heat up the adhesive on the back of these price stickers that are on her, the little barcode stickers. It's just an easy way to remove these, uh, to use like your little putty knife there or your fingernail and get under there and then just be careful not to burn your fingers because I've done that a time or two. And so, but you're just heating that up and it just peels right off and it leaves very minimal um, adhesive on there. If it does leave a little bit of the adhesive or you just want to kind of blend that in a little bit more, just run a little emery board over it or sanding, you know, some sandpaper to kind of help get that off and remove that. And it just kind of helps it so there's no residue left behind. Mind. Now I'm taking the two, we're just going to call them a house piece, even though they're kind of like a picket fence, or I think they're supposed to be kind of like a house, but we're taking the two house pieces and we're going to place them against the side pieces here. You want your side pieces to be on the outside. See how I slip this piece on the inside there? Because you don't want any rough edges to show when you're looking at this head on if you're looking at it from the a house facing you. Now I'm just using some E6000 glue. I feel like this works a little bit better than hot glue, but like some Gorilla Glue would work great. Some of the Dollar Tree Super Glue would work great. Uh, I just like the gel consistency of the E6000 here to make sure that I'm getting a good bond. But any type of of like adhesive that you're used to using. So I put that on all three sides and then I'm just going to set that off to the side there and then put some glue on my other one so I can work fairly quickly once I have this done. This is why I don't think hot glue would work the best because I feel like it would break down over time and I feel like sometimes if it dries a little bit it gets a little clumpy and I don't want that happening with this. I want this to look as clean and precise as I can. Now I'm just going to, now I realized here quickly that I placed the outside of this piece on the inside. So when you're doing this and putting it together, just make sure you have all of the outside pieces that have that kind of planked wood look on the outside. And you can do this with any wood pieces. I mean, say you had like a couple pieces of picket fence or some scrap wood in your garage, you could definitely cut these down and make this. You wouldn't have to use uh, anything from Dollar Tree. If you already had some scrap wood, it would be a free project for you to make. So I'm just fitting these together very nicely here, making sure that I line all of the edges up. You do have a little bit of movement with that E6000 that you can kind of scoot any of the pieces around as you need. Now I love these clamps. These are some of my favorite clamps. I have them in a couple of different sizes and it really helps to get that pressure and leave that on until that E6000 dries. And then this is going to be a pretty permanent fixture here. So I'm just going to line the sides up on this side now and I'm going to place another one of these clamps. And I'm just making sure that the sides line up the best because I want this to look, I mean, if you decide you're gonna sell these or anything like that, you definitely want the most professional look. So just take your time and make sure uh, that everything looks really nice and clean there. And so then I just squeeze this other set of clamps on here and I leave this overnight to dry. And you can kind of see here, I need to kind of scoot that in a little bit more, push it down, make sure that's got a really even, you have a little bit, like I say with that E6000, a little bit of movement to do that. And then these clamps just squeeze on here to have that really nice firm tight. And again, I just leave this overnight, give it one last little squeeze there so it can dry completely. So the next day I come back and I'm going to remove these clamps and there's a little trigger on them that you just kind of pull and that releases the tension. They're very easily to operate and then they just slide off. I just pick these up like at Home Depot or Lowe's. You can order them on Amazon. They're pretty easy to find at any type of home decor store or not home decor store, but home improvement store. Now, just showing you how sturdy this box is, it is not going anywhere. That E6000 worked great to give this the uh, bond that it needed. I'm going to go over this with a little bit of have a fingernail file. You guys know me, you know, I love to distress things. So whether you paint this or whether you distress it, leave it as it is. Anyway, it's going to be beautiful. 
this has a little bit of grooves in it to kind of have it look like planks of wood so it really does kind of help those pop when you sand around them you can kind of see I'll show you I just think it looks really nice and kind of has a good rustic touch if you were to sell these you could do several different finishes see which sold best for you but I'll just repeat that same process around the entire piece now I'm just going to stick any plant that you've got at home or any type of greenery or anything like that this is just like a little planter box for you and so it's going to be really cute and really nice however I have this piece of rope I had some extra rope lying around from another project I'm just going to spray it with some water and kind of pull it taut and then let it dry flat so I can get that little kink that was in there out of it now you don't have to do the rope this is totally optional it, it don't go out and buy it it's going to take you over that five dollar budget but if you happen to have some laying around your house or in your garage or something you just need maybe like not even quite a foot like 10 inches maybe of it and I just tied it in a knot on either end I'm going to place this in here and glue it down with some hot glue and I'm going to glue it onto either side on the inside and then to have this hold in place until that glue dries I just use a couple of my little Dollar Tree clamps I love these things do you guys use these in your crafting they come in a couple different sizes and I feel like I use them all the time but that's just going to help those that rope stay in place and get a good bond there now you're not going to be carrying this by the rope however if you were to sell this somebody might think like oh I can carry this by the rope and you don't want it coming off this the glue does give a really Really good bond but I do go in with my staple gun and I just give it a staple on each side just make sure your staples are deep enough to go through the rope and the wood there um, you could even look how cute this looks with the plant in there you could even drill like a hole um, like on either side like right here you could draw drill a hole on either side and have the rope come through and tie on the knot on the outside or the inside that would be really cute but look at how beautiful this is it was a very simple project it did not take much time at all and I think for the impact and the size of this piece for being less than five dollars is great and of course if you were to sell these you wouldn't have to put a plant in them you could display it with a plant and show because a lot of people a lot of us especially crafters have a lot of greenery laying around our house that you could just stick in here but for different seasons to tuck into on a shelf I think this is just beautiful what do you guys think of this piece do you like this one Thank you so much for joining me today. It's so fun to be back this year with some new projects for you. I'm excited for all of the things that 2024 holds for us. And I just want you guys to know how much I appreciate your love and support with all of my videos and my crafting. You guys are just the best. Hopefully these ideas gave you some different techniques that you can use with your crafting all throughout the year. It doesn't have to be just for farmhouse or spring. These are techniques that you can use anytime. And it was so fun creating all of these. Do you guys have a favorite? Which one of these are you most likely to try I would love to know down in the comments are you a spring person if you are leave me a flower emoji because I am so excited for spring and warmer weather coming I know we have to get through these winter months and winter has its purpose but man I'm so looking forward to days of sunshine hopefully right around the corner thanks so much for joining me today I'll see you next time happy crafting if you like the video that you just saw and you want to keep crafting together, here's another video that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.